Welcome to another edition of Anyone, Anywhere, Anytime with me, Marshan Kenny. Once again, I appreciate you supporting the show early on. And in some Golden Eagle news right now, the Southern Miss baseball team had an impressive showing over the past weekend and swept Dallas Baptist. I mean, if anybody knows baseball, Dallas Baptist is a very impressive program. And uh, what a great, great showing. And that pitching staff uh, got back on fire, so great job assisting Southern Miss baseball coach, Coach Oz, and getting that staff back together after a couple rough outings there, but it looks like we're back on track. Uh, and switching to Southern Miss men's basketball and Southern Miss women's basketball, unfortunately, we had some early exits from the uh, SBC tournament down in Pensacola, but to take away nothing from the regular season that both uh, the men and women did have, you know, and it looks like we're both going to the NIT and uh, in the men and women. So that's a great, great job over there to get some postseason play. And uh, I just can't say enough, especially about that Southern Miss men's basketball team and all the smiles they put on our faces this year. Well, recently I've been uh, having fan comments towards the end of the show, but I thought I'd bring the comments in early. I, I put a question out on Twitter that I thought you'd be pretty passionate about and Turns out you really, really were. I asked the Southern Miss Nation, I said, what are your thoughts on former Southern Miss football coach Ellis Johnson? I cannot get to all the comments that came in, but if you want some good reads, maybe a little entertainment, go to my Twitter page and read all the comments that came in for the thoughts on former Southern Miss football coach Ellis Johnson. But I had to choose some for this show, and it's this segment that we call Four and Out. So here's some comments that I picked out that I thought were pretty fantastic about former Southern Miss football coach Ellis Johnson and your thoughts on him. First up, Mandy, uh, Twitter handle at MJ7273. She said, I don't have enough liquor to get me through all my thoughts about him. Good stuff. Next up, at Landon Howell, he said his hire made complete sense. Respected name, had experience with the program, Low money contract, end of his career, likely retiring after a five plus year run, meaning that we'd unlikely to lose him after a couple of successful seasons. The problem is he just didn't take us as seriously as we took us. Uh, great comments right there, Landon Howell. Next up, at Reagan Grant, he says, anytime I see this guy's face, I think about the time I saw the full body Coca-Cola cardboard cut out of him decapitated in a trash can in the parking lot of a gas station on Hardy Street. Great comments right there, Reagan Grant. I'm sure that was a, uh, a fond memory of yours right there, it seems. Next up, Coach Kenny Ray, Twitter handle at KWRay54. He says he was too old school in a game that had progressed. But the real issue to me is you were coming off a successful era. Why didn't we promote someone on the staff? parentheses, Blake Anderson. To try and continue the success we were already having, it wasn't broke, Van Hall for life, SMTTT. Great comments, Coach Kenny Ray, a former teammate of mine and a great friend of mine to this day. Well, this show's big with interviews, and today's interview I am super fired up about. He's a guy who's a great, great friend of mine to this day. He was an unbelievable teammate of mine back in the day. He's the definition of the nasty bunch, if you ask me. So today's interview is with the one, the only, T.J. Slaughter. When you talk about passion, when you talk about intensity, when you talk about leadership, when you talk about the definition of what a nasty bunch football player should be, you're talking about T.J. Slaughter. He was a great friend, a great teammate. Uh, and T.J., it is just so awesome to have you on, man. So how, how's, how's the world treating you, man? Man, the world treat me okay. You know, I ain't got no complaints. You know, it's good to be here. It's good to see you, man. And it's always a pleasure to do anything with Marsh and Kenny. Man, you know, I appreciate you that. Give me all these accolades, but you was a dog yourself, brother. Oh, we'll get into that, man. We'll have some dog stories. There's no doubt about that, man. But let's talk about you. This is your interview first up. 
So All some right. of your accolades from Southern Miss, man, Buckus Award candidate. You're in the Southern Miss Hall of Fame. You know, Conference USA first team, back-to-back, All-American. I mean, you did so much at Southern Miss, over 400 career tackles, well over 400 career tackles, eight years in the NFL, and that's where your dog beats me. You, you were in the NFL way longer than I, I was there for like a minute, man. You were there for eight years. So, But, uh, man, all those accolades and stuff, man, how does that make you feel just years later? Truthfully, I don't care. I really, I, I, I never cared about accolades. I never cared about tackles. All the thing I cared about, we won or lost. And my main thing was to win. You know, I was a, I, I think I was a team player. I felt I was a leader, but my job was to set the tempo, to show these people they in our backyard. We feel to beat the hell out of y'all. And then you come over here, this is our house, and you feel to know it. You know, that was my main thing. I never, like, was like, oh, I need to have four sacks this game, or I need to have 10 tackles. I never even thought about it. Not until I got into the NFL and people were like, oh, this person had this tackle or this many tackles. Did I even start even thinking about tackles? That was never on my list of anything. It was just to be a team player and uh, knock the shit out of people. Yeah, and, and that's what I loved about you, man. I mean, you earned everybody's respect really, really fast, man, and earned mine immediately. So, uh, but man, let's get into a little backstory about you, T. So, grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, man. Uh, football was in your blood. I mean, basically from a young age, your uncle, Derek Slaughter, was a great football player for Alabama, man. And you said he was your hero. So, man, football being in your blood, just your upbringing in Birmingham, Alabama, man, if you want to talk, mind talking about that a little bit. Okay, so let me let me go back to the early years. So the early years, let's get early. Yeah. <laughs> so when I was a young pup, you know, me and my brothers, I had I got an older brother and a younger brother. We used to fight all the time. So my mama took me to the park one day. I wasn't even old enough to play football. I think I was just just had turned five. And there was a coach out there named Daryl Willerton. And um he walked, my mom walked over and said, he's old enough to play and all like this. And he was like, nah, he's too young. But he had a son, too, that was my age. His name was Wilson. Okay. And they took me to a couple of drills. And he's like, he's going to let me play. And we was playing with the older boys. We were supposed old, to be playing. Oh, how old, TJ, how old were you right five. there? I was five. 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 God. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we got out there. And that, get, that year, we won. I think we might have won two games. Wow. We sucked. <laughs> I mean, we had a couple of athletes, but I'll tell you, it was bad. And then the next year, the, my coach, he went and recruited all these players. Like, he went to projects and everything. And he put all of us in one melting pot. And we lost – in eight years, I think we lost a total of two games. We won AFC Championship. We got – it's, it's a book written about us by a guy named Corey McKinney um, called uh, – Oh, yeah, I know Corey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Corey. Yep. So uh, – and I'm in the book and stuff he, he wrote about. And, like, I played offensive line. But coach, coach was, like, the best players, the toughest players you got to put on the offensive line because you got to block. And I played D-line. And then I think when I was – we got to probably 10, 11 year, year olds, And then the team of bundles were struggling. We had been undefeated for, like, four or five years. So coach told us to stay down, me and Wilson to stay down, and play with the team below us so we can win the championship. And then we won it. And then I, I moved a running back and linebacker then. But I played every position on the football field. What's up? Wow. Quarterback, I think. I, I, and cornerback. I played safety, though. I played nose guard, tackle, everything. They just used to move us around. Wherever they needed us, we played. And so when I got to high school, uh, my coach that coached me in Little League that I stayed down, he went to – my last year of Little League football, he went to John Carroll Catholic and started a Little League team there. And then I was still – I wanted to finish my last year at Crestwood. He wanted to take me over there, but I was like, no, nah, I've been playing here the whole time. I want to finish this year. And then we played them. I ran all over them, and I was tackling like crazy. So I guess he talked to the high school coach. And, and you're playing linebacker was, right there, right? Yeah, I was playing linebacker and running back. I and running back. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you were athletic. You were athletic. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> so – uh. The high school coach seen me play, and somehow they talked, and I was getting in trouble at middle school. Like, I was getting a lot of fights, and I used to fight gangs and stuff because I, I didn't like the fact that a dude would get picked on one day, and then the next day he will get jumped into a gang, and then he the dude picking on other people. So I used to fight everybody. Yeah. And then 
I got in some look, I got in some mix-ups with some games. So my mom, somehow my coach talked to my mom. I mean, yeah, I talked to my mom. My mom had kicked me out. And then next thing you know, my coach called me and he was like, where you at? And I was with my uncle, Derek Slaughter, yeah. staying in Tuscaloosa at the time with him for the summer. And then when I came back, I wind up my coach going to live with my coach and going to John Carroll. Wow. Wow. No, man, just stories like that, man. That just, I just remembered, you know, getting to know you, toughness at a young age. And a lot of those kind of stories, why we bonded so much. I mean, she, you know, my dad was yeah. in the mafia, died in prison, man. Mm -hmm. We just had this tough upbringing, man. We, we had a lot yeah. to bond over, had an attitude, had this angriness yep. about you. We just did, man. And, uh, but it's yeah, good. no, that, that sharing that story right there, man. Thank you very much. You know, I just, like I said, People want to want people to get to know a little bit more about TJ Slaughter for sure, man. And uh, but you played football a lot, obviously. So you were running back, linebacker. I mean, you're an athlete. You were one of those guys when it was time to sign for college football, and you actually, you know, we got you at Southern Miss. I, I was like, man, you, you know, you just were somebody I thought would be at Alabama, Auburn. Uh, I mean, you were athletic, man. You you were just one of them cats that were bigger Boy, recruits than I was. So how'd you wind up at Southern Miss, man? So. By the grace of God, I, I, I think Southern Miss was the best place for me still to this day. I was actually going to Alabama 14 days before signing day. Gene Jepps and Antonio Langham got in trouble, and they took away 14 of their scholarships. Yep. Alabama's crew as a linebacker. They recruited nine linebackers the year before I came out. And my uncle played for Alabama. So Alabama, everybody automatically thought I was going to Alabama. I mean, from 13 years old, I knew Albert Bell, Gene Jelts, like Cornelius Bennett, Derek Thomas. I, I, I used to hang with Alabama. That was all I bled. And then uh, when they got in trouble, I was like, Boosters was talking to me, and they was going like, they was calling my mom and said, we'll send him to Alabama the first year. My mom like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. I'm like, you ain't got no say. You know, I, I don't even believe hell. You know, I was trying to book my chest. And my mom like, I don't want you to go to Alabama. And then Southern Miss came to my house. And that was when Randy Butler and Coach Bauer came to my house. And I was going to play a basketball game, so they couldn't even talk to me. And they, I walk around. I'm, I'm probably they, uh, you. You were playing hoops. It, it, yeah, and John Carroll like, too. Yep, around. playing hoops too. Yep. yep. So they couldn't talk to me because I had a game that night, and I probably soaked wet 180 pounds. I was <laughs> like, I was a skinny kid, but I was, I was tough. You know. Oh yeah. And they looking at me and they were like. We go offer him and all this, and I'm like walking through the house, laughing and smiling. I'm like, "This the head coach here and all like this." And somehow, I like Randy Butler. I just uh -huh. me and Coach Butler, I really liked him. And then, so I took a trip down there. And when I took a trip down there, it was really good. But I also went to Arkansas, okay. and I went on a crew trip to Arkansas after the, after this incident. And Arkansas was giving them the, their. Arkansas had their own dorm rooms, and I had big problems with roommates. Like I just like I'm a fucking dude up if I have a roommate. I'm like I can't do this. Like, and I was like, I'm like I'm telling you right now. I, and so the message we were talking, I said I had one. I said, look, I go here. I said I'm gonna, I said I'm telling you right now. But if we have a roommate. That's gonna be a prop. <laughs> they were like, what? what? What is wrong with you? And I was like, what do you mean? What's wrong with me? I said I like my own space. And I was like. Yep. I said, so we could do it how you want to do it. I said, I could make certain myths, but I said, I'm telling you, we have a roommate. If I have a roommate, we will have a problem. So I had to go to this, like, all this. I had to go see a psychiatrist and all this shit. And they <laughs> deemed me can't have a roommate. And then I think the second year I was there, you know, they tried to get rid of athletic dorms and they tried to bring me a roommate in. <laughs> and then yeah, I, yeah. Flipped, I flipped out. But yeah. um, so the myth was the best place for me. Like, I, I had a blast. I mean, me and Coach Bauer, I still love him to this day. Coach Butler, yeah. John Thompson, Tyrone Nix. Like, I still talk to all these coaches, like, on a regular. Me and Tyrone Nix just was talking to each other on um, Instagram the other day. Man, that, that's awesome. Well, man, I mean, for example, you and I, man, we, it was a no-brainer for us to be at John Thompson's event, you know, inducted to the Hall of Fame, man, because we, we love that, man. He made such an impact on our lives, man. He loved you, man. You know, he loved T.J. Slaughter. So, uh, but yeah, he, he was, oh, man, 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 you made a, you made a lot of plays for him. You made him look great a lot of times. That's for sure, man. But, dude, let's get when you first got to Southern Miss, though, man. So, 
you know, like you said, you were about 200 pounds, give or take, when you gave him a Southern Miss. You were athletic, uh, but playing linebacker, man. Uh, I mean, by the time you're out of there, you got up to 245, 240, man, just, you know. But when you got there, man, you were super athletic playing outside linebacker. But I remember a practice with you. So you're a freshman, and our fullback, Brad Hamilton, who was a tough yeah. dude, hard mm-hmm. nose. So you and you're at linebacker, he's at fullback. You, you guys meet up in the middle or right outside the middle or something. And your helmet pops off. It's such a collision, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. But you're still going, man. You don't yeah. stop. You still yeah. grind. You came about to play. Your face is kind of busted up. And you were yeah. like, next play. You you literally, like, what? Next play. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. we got a dog here. We got we got somebody, man. Do you remember that? You got to remember that play, man. I, I remember it. It's, uh, <laughs> when I say Brad, I mean, I, I thought Brad was the a beast. You know, he was laying the wood on a lot of linebackers. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Like, I'm a type of person, I scan the scene. And I'm like, okay, I got to take him out. I got to take him out. I got to take him out. And I, I just knew it. Like, when I first walked on the yard, when they showed me videos, I was like, Brad, oh, I watched them. They were showing me practice. I was like, that this dude, fullback, come at you. Yeah. So I got to show him that I'm the, I'm going to meet him. Yeah. And then it was it was Buck. And I was like, oh, this this I got to I gotta get with him. And it was like a couple more people I had looked at. Like, I, I was like, I thought people were intimidated by Casey Keith. So I was like, okay, I got to get at him, <laughs> you know. And I, that's what I do. I pick out all the bad people that I think. <laughs> Okay, this is my challenges. And I was like, from day one, I'm gonna get it over with. And that when I see Brad and we I had the opportunity to hit him. I mean, as soon as I hit him, he broke my straps. Literally, we hit and my head just shot off. Yeah, I mean, uh, I remember the yeah. collision. Pow. <laughs> yeah, and then it was my face against his face mask. And I just kept going. I, I said, they ain't going to stop me because they're going to either think of, I, I'm either going to show them that I'm a crazy motherfucker, you got to deal with me, or you got to kill me. And that's the way I looked at it. And it was one of the, I think, that one of that hit, me stepping up the ball counter, kind of laid my path. Like, I, I love Book to death. Like, me and oh, Book yeah. were, like, so cool after everything else. But I remember I was coming out of the dorm and I seen Book again. I was ready to fight again. And he was like, hey, man, let's go. Let's go to the dorm. Yeah. And we both trying to get to the dorm. And I was like, oh, he cool. Like, because I was just ready because I didn't know. And, um. But Southern Miss, to me, was we were so, as a group, I looked at us like a family. Like, exactly. there were so many stories. Like, we, me and you hung out. We went to New Orleans together. I went to your group home and everything. It was just like we were brothers. We was in a lot. So Southern Miss was always like, I don't even look at the NFL more about football. I look at Southern Miss in my high school more about football. Because to, to me, it was a, a family I didn't have. At yeah. The time. yeah. And, and that's where you and I kind of bonded, man. I had no brothers, sisters, or parents raised in the boys' home. You know, man, we, yeah. we just had a similar vibe, man. Southern Miss was kind of a family vibe to us, man. That's why you you and I bonded so well, man. And, uh, you know, I had your back, you had mine. And kind of getting on Van Hall real quick, man. I mean, you know, I don't want to tell too many stories what happened behind those walls, but there were so many stories behind the Van Hall walls, man. But, but dude, it was a brotherhood, a fraternity that we had, man. You know, V5 is still a thing, man, you know, on social yeah. media. Uh, dude, how, how was it just living at Van Hall and just that whole vibe, man? It, it was so cool. You know, this is, this is what I'm telling you. So let me, let, me, let me go back to high school first. Okay. So I went to John Carroll. It was a Catholic private school. I ain't Catholic, if you didn't know. I'm, 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 I never considered myself a denomination. I was raised Southern Baptist. I got baptized in the Methodist church. I went to a Catholic high school, so I'm all over the place. But when I got to John Carroll, we started a lot of religions. And then I started learning about different denominations. It was about somebody just get mad at the church, break away, and they take some people with it, and they start their own thing. And I'm like, hey, man, Jesus ain't never said nothing about all these denominations and all like this. What, what are y'all talking about? So... All these kids were having problems, you know, like we'll study religion in this class and people be getting divorced and they were rich kids, you know, so they'll be like crying and they'd be like, my mama trying to buy me a, 
a sixty thousand dollar car. I'm like, Daddy want to buy me an eighty thousand dollar car. I don't know what to do. I'm like, shit, who cares? My my mother, daddy got the one day buy me shit, you know. Yeah. So I had a hard time relating to stuff. Yeah. But we played this game in Alexandria, and they had like this top running back. And John Carroll was 0 and 30 before I got there. 0 hmm. and 30. And we went undefeated as a freshman team. My sophomore year, they got me killed. Like, I used to run the ball then. I mean, as soon as I touched the ball, I'd be getting hit. So I'd, get, I'd be pissed, so I wanted to go to defense to knock this crap out of them because they would knock the crap out of me. <laughs> so that's how my anger really was, like, directed. at they hit me, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to show your ass a hit, you know, so yeah. I'll go over there and knock your head off. But in that game, they were tackling me, and dudes were pulling the hair out my leg, and they was grabbing my privates and punching me in Golly, the Golly, man. <laughs> this, this, this was in a high school football game. Uh -huh. And the ref seen the dude do it again, and I got up and cussed the ref out, and they threw me out of the game. And my coach was like, I told you to calm down. My coach got mad at me. And it's one thing about every coach I had almost been sort of like a father figure to me, uh -huh. even in high school. And I was pissed. So I'm sitting at the game. One of the guys came by me. His name was Charles Davis. I remember today. He was like, Tia, you okay? I said, man, I'm going to ask me. To move. I'm fucking okay. You better be ready to fight after the game. <laughs> and they were like, what? Tia, you ain't playing. And I was like, and I, I ain't, these boys didn't know me. They didn't know where, how I was raised or anything else. So, like, literally, the game ended. I'm Everybody taking off their helmets, go shake hands. I'm like, <laughs> bug mine up. <laughs> and like the dude that was grabbing my nuts and um pulling the hand my leg, he comes up to me to shake my hand, big old lineman. And he like ha <laughs> ha laughing. I swear my shit, I drew back my hand so far, I slapped this dude so hard. I mean, and a sea of orange just attacked me. And I'm like swinging on everybody. And all of a sudden, the D tackle runs and hit the dude in the back, and he and, and I see the a dude buckle in front of me. And we fighting the stands, the people, the coaches. Our coaches try to get us all police, everything. So, oh, dude, it's thing, a brawl. It's, 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 it's everybody. a all-out brawl. Yeah, <laughs> but we, our fans, were fighting. <laughs> they, they was on a different thing. We had like a different place. So we get back to school the next day. The principal comes in there and he makes everybody write an essay and everything else about what happened. It's like whoever started this is gonna get in trouble. Get in trouble and all of this. We're gonna kick you. And I wrote. The dudes hit me, and I put everything, but them boys took up for me, and it was funny. We all bonded. Like, that fight, to me, made us, like, tight as all I do. Like, some of these guys had never been to fight and everything else, and they were like, I got my lip busted, and they were screaming and stuff. And to this day, I could talk to them guys went to high school with me, and they bring up that fight at Alexandria. And I think that's what brought us together, and, like, we went to the semifinals of the playoffs. And we lost to Homewood, but I had a torn MCL because I was trying to block a kick and somebody hit me in my knee. But mm -hmm. it, it brought us together like none other. So all my life, football has been like a – I mean, I play other sports. I played basketball, ran track. I played baseball and all that crap. But football was that corrosive sniff, that family affair yeah. that I needed. Like it was the glue that stick because it's like you can play basketball – and it's shooting, it's pants, but you can't just go and smack somebody. Right, right. And even at practice, like in football, you can get mad at each other. Like, we do something about it, <laughs> you know? Right. It's the only person you can fight, get in trouble, and you don't go to jail. <laughs> that, that, that's him. And, and stories like that, everything you're saying, man, that's the beauty of Southern Miss. And that was what made you the perfect Southern Miss player. Man, you had a chip on your shoulder. You didn't really like your opponent. We respected him. You know, but you really didn't like him. I didn't like him, man. I hated him. And uh, it was it was us against the us against the world mentality, dude. And that's yeah. what was Southern Miss when we were the best G five program in America back when we were playing, man. It was us against yeah. the world. It was, man. <laughs> yeah, but I, I honestly dislike teams though. Like I hated Tulane. Like when we got beat in Tulane, I was like, oh, like it was like somebody stabbed me. In 98, yep. I, yeah. that. I was like, oh, we going to kill them. Like, I was so pissed that they beat us. And I, I don't know. It's Like I said, I never – it never was about a stack, though. Like, when people yeah. say, I'm going to tell you, like, I couldn't even tell you. And, like, 
I looked at this video, my highlight film that Bill gave me, my agent gave me when I was coming out. He made this highlight film and it said how many titles I had, but I never thought of it. Then somebody told me, I remembered I had 27 tackles and three sacks against Texas A&M. Well, let me get let me get into some of that stuff, man. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll get into some. Of, so, and actually getting into Southern Miss right now, because like I said, let, there's so many highlights of you, man. I, I don't I, I don't know where to begin. Let me just backtrack a little bit. There's a picture in 1996 when we beat Georgia. You know, that was huge, man, went in between the hedges. Last play of the game for Georgia. You're coming on a blitz. Yeah. You get double teamed. You decide instead of taking them on to go Superman over these dudes. And there is yeah. a picture of you. You got to be about <laughs> eight feet in the air trying to get to the quarterback. You disrupt the pass. End of game, pass batted down or picked off. I don't quite, but but we beat Georgia on the last play of the game. You're coming like nobody's. Be, I'm getting to the quarterback or else, man. <laughs> you remember the? Well, you know what play I'm talking about? Yeah, Cedric Walthall was coming from the other side though too. Yeah, and no, he, Cedric was coming, but yeah. you you were you were taking the blockers on. So, yeah, so you decide to just fly like a superhero. I was like, the dude was <laughs> the dude was a lot bigger than me. <laughs> you can if you see the picture. Yeah. I was like, but it, it's a no beautiful way. picture. It is a yeah. beautiful picture, man. I said, no way in hell, I'm about to run through this big old jungle. So I said, I'm gonna go over. <laughs> and when awesome. I jumped, you know, he kind of hit my hip. When he hit my hip, that just twisted me. Wow. And I flipped over and landed right on top of Bobo. If Sid was hitting them from the side, I was coming over the top, and they, they we won the game. But it was, that's probably one of the greatest plays of my life. I just sold out. I just yeah. like I'm, I had to, I'm gonna do whatever I got to do to get through this guy. And that that was the beauty of you as a teammate, man. I could always count on you. You know, trust and respect. It's hard to get to get from a lot of people. You earned that from day one, man. And then sure enough, a play like yeah. that because when I think of you, man, a, a, a C in the air, stuff like that. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. getting the quarterback no, no matter what. Uh, you talked about losing to Tulane and how hard that hurt, man. Because people don't realize, just unless you live through it, how good we were. We were the best yeah. G5 team in America. You, from 96 to 99, when we're in conference, you say, dude, you lost two conference games. That's why yeah. that Tulane one hurt so bad and it was Tulane, man. So, But, dude, back with them when we were the best, how, I mean, just how'd that feel, dude? Nasty you bunch, know, you know, just, you know, just all that. <laughs> I, I don't think we're supposed to lose to anybody. You know, right. and, and and it's crazy because the game we went and played in Nebraska. I mean, in '99, oh the senior year. Yeah, they were number five, uh, number four, yeah. number four. We, 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 I mean, uh, we pounded them boys. Yeah, and I mean, everything they dished out, we were sending back. I mean, uh, if a couple plays on offense and turn over the ball and stuff, it, I, I mean, I think we would have gave a run for the money. But you know, I I wanted to be a. Uh, Sometimes I rub the offense the wrong way because, you know, I speak up in the team. And I'm like, look, let me know what y'all need, you know. But I was, to me, I was being a, a team player. I, I wanted to give them any look they wanted or anything they do to make sure all around we was good, you know. Right. And if we had any problems, I was there. I said, look, use me. Dude, I, I can play any defensive thing you want me to do, but <laughs> – Use me so we can we can win these games. And that's what all I wanted. You know, sometimes they get mad, like, I'm talking to offense. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to win. I don't care. And that's why I tell people, people say, oh, man, this happened. You got this. I'm like, I didn't care about tackles. I cared about if we won a loss. My teammates know what we did, know what I yep. did. And and that's, I mean, some games I, I had two and three linemen coming, coming at me, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, well dude. But some teams will try to F me up, for real. <laughs> well, well, dude, by the time you're a senior, you and Adelius Thomas are fighting for the best defender in Conference USA. I mean, it's you yeah. or him weekly. That, that's how good y'all were, man. I mean, not – not, and you're on the same team, man. So, I was, yeah, you had a bullseye on your back by the time you're a senior, man. Everybody knew about you. Dude, talk about that Texas A&M game. That was the – so, y'all played number four, Nebraska. Then y'all played number five, Texas A&M on the road right after. Dude, you have 26 tackles. That, that's insane. Do you remember, like, the, the certain aspects of that game, getting in the zone, or, or what was that it, like? You know, uh, it wasn't even about a zone. I was just doing my job. Right. Now, the crazy thing was I tore my thumb. I tackled Big Tunes. 
hit him. He oh, fell that on big, my big running back there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and when he, he landed, he landed on my thumb and it snapped it. So I run to the sideline. I like, I can't move my thumb. I can't move my thumb. They were like, fuck. You, you tore your, and they did something. You tore your thing, ligament. I said, tape it down. So they take this hand down. I'm doing something else. I tear the other thumb. Partially tear it. They tear it down. So I'm playing the game with both of my hands taped down like this. No thumb. Nah, I believe, like man. This. What? And, uh, I was just like, every time they would throw a pass, they never sent the running back out. They would just sit there every now and then they do it. So I'll just, and I had them spied, and I'll just blitz the quarterback. So yeah. I would get, I got three sacks doing that, just blitzing the quarterback. And every time I ran the mile, I was just going, you know, you know, I, I just go, you know, and I, I wind up having 20, I think 26, seven, seven tackles and three sacks. Who was it? If anybody doesn't know middle linebacker play, you get 26 tackles in the game. That's like, you can't do that on PlayStation, man. I mean, that's, that's just, it's video yeah. game numbers, man. <laughs> I would beat it. Though. <laughs> so that, and that's yeah. a hell of a behind the scenes stories though, right there, man. And, uh, I want to talk about one other game this year because, dude, when I, you know, obviously your name pops up whenever I'm around Southern Miss, man. Y'all playing Army your senior year. Oh, yeah. Man, there, there is a hit people still talk about. You met this, the fullback or the, or the running back right in the middle. And the, the, the sound people talk about, it, it echoed, it went throughout the stadium, it went across campus. You know what hit I'm talking about? Yes. I, I actually got it on my Instagram. But the, the thing, this is how it was. Uh, Coach Bauer was making a big deal, and JT, uh, they, they was, um, I don't think John Thompson was with us then. I think it was T. Nix then. But they was making a big deal about this fullback because he ran like 200 some yards against Louisville, Louisville the week before. And I'm like, man, who is this fullback y'all keep talking about? And it was saying all this stuff about this cat. I said, I'm going I'm to take him out. And they were like, I knew Army, because we had played him like the years before, and I knew they they run this. A wishbone option crap, and then I was like, "Man, somebody got to pound this fullback. We got to take him out." And uh, open, it was like the opening play of the game almost. I think it was and early. They, <laughs> yeah, they, they literally run the dive, and I said, "When he first dive, I'm coming." And literally, I was like, I was low and everything. Like I said, I'm on meters there. And as soon as the ball hiked, that thing opened up, and it was just like this. They were handling, it and I was coming. And wow, I mean, when I hit him, my shot. I, I I really ran through him. Like he flipped back, hit on that, and I seen it in his face. He was just like, like he was done. <laughs> like he was he I'm was not, done. Like, you you done you go, he, it, it like I said, when people talk about that hit, you know, that were there, they, they they heard it. You were off campus, you heard that hit, man. It's just one of those you remember to this day. What what a cast on my hand. <laughs> what a cast. Yeah, you had the big cast that game, yep. Oh, um, <laughs> Dude, so 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 many stories about you, man, that are just so awesome, dude. Um, so talking about 98, so 97, my senior year, your sophomore, win the Liberty Bowl. 98, y'all go to Boise for the Humanitarian Bowl. Oh, yeah. And we, we, I, I, you know, I know I hate to bring a bad, but dude, still only two teams from Conference USA went to a bowl. It's still a big deal being a bowl. And the point to this is, so 99, the last game of, of your year, right around that last game, you have a talk with the team before the game because it was for the Conference USA Championship or something. And you basically tell the team, we're not going back to Boise, you know, in, in more or less oh, yeah. words. Man, yeah. talk about that. Because when TJ Slaughter at that point, by the time you're seeing you spoke, there ain't a person on that team that didn't listen to you, man. Well, the, the, thing, the thing with Boise was, I mean, it was great. We went to a bowl game. But I really was pissed we didn't win the conference, you know. And then when we got up there, we get up like three scores and let these fools come back and beat us. And I just thought about everything we did that week. And I, I like, I was pissed. Like, I mean, I seen guys drinking. I seen guys doing the wrong thing. And I don't know. I felt like I let the team down. Yeah. Because I should have stopped it. Gotcha. You know, and um, it, I even did some extracurricular stuff, you know. And I, I, I felt like I let my brothers down. Literally, mm -hmm. I just, like, I looked at the guys and just to lose to the Idaho Vandals, it was just like, not, no. We might yeah. lose to Alabama because they got 
five D lines and five offensive linemen or, or Florida State, but we are not losing Bro. to nothing like this. Mm -hmm. So I took it upon myself to really tune in, especially my senior year, because it was I was on the way out. You know, I wanted to leave guys with some. Roy McGee was like my little bro. Yeah. And I wanted to just set an example and do everything right. I mean, John Thompson used to always say, no, don't cut no corners, you know, no cut no corners. No cut Even corner. when we run, run, you know, he's like, you can, you can break the edge or you can run to the edge and, and run all the way around it. Don't cut corners. Don't in the classroom yeah. it, but you're going to cut them in life. And it's, that has stuck with me my whole life, yeah. you know? So, my thing was to just to tell the guys how I felt. I mean, I don't like. I look back at college and everything. There are so many things I did. I don't know. Like I can watch a video of myself talking, mm. and I look at that guy, and I y'all was college was doing something for me. I had so much. Anger and hate in my heart uh, from life and different things. That the game was my medicine, mm. almost. Yeah. And, and and to talk about that, it'd be a whole other therapy session, you know. But, but no, I, I feel you right there, man. Dude, it was therapeutic being being you know in, in between the yard line, yard markers i mean it just it, it was man it was medicine for a lot of guys you me stuff like that so i feel you man a lot of people feel yeah. you too man I, I get it um so you, you tell the team we're not we're not going back to boys in your senior year y'all don't you go back to liberty bowl in 99 with conference usa man and then one more tj quote that people love man you know before the game colorado state had a good running back and you said you had a dream about it if you could tell me what that quote was, man, in the dream you had. I don't I, – I, I think I hit the dude and killed him. So I can't remember. Like that, That's the quote. It's more or less I had, you had a dream and you, yeah, you, so he died. <laughs> this is what I know. The, the, the number one thing was I hated McDougal. And I don't – not really hated the guy in a sense of – I didn't know the guy. But when you played me, I like – took vendettas against you. Like, I literally they hated you. Like, if I hit you, I hit you and knock you out, I was happy. I wasn't going to help you up. i probably step on you or something like this. I didn't care. And this dude was balling. Like, we were watching film on him. I was like, okay, that was my target. I'm going to take him out. And it was just like when I seen Brad Hamilton, just like when I seen Book Halter, anybody else, it was like, Okay, that's my target. I need to destroy that target. So he became my mission to destroy it. And I went to the bathroom. He was in the bathroom at a banquet. The, the, week, of I, the, the week of the Liberty yeah, Bowl. The week of the Liberty Bowl. Yeah, week of the Liberty Bowl. And I walked in and he, and he walked out. I swear it took everything in my power for my, me not to beat this dude up. Like, <laughs> I wanted to jump him. Like, literally, I was like, what they going to say? I, 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 I literally wanted to beat him up. Uh -huh. But when I got to the game, he made it to the game. And, oh, I was after him. Like, I tell you, like, I think that I, they linemen were after me. I know they was after me. But everything in my power, like, I tell you, everywhere he thought he was going, every time he thought he was getting somewhere, I was there. Yeah. Every <laughs> time. Oh, that, that's awesome. And, and man, it, it, you did. And defense showed up big that day, man. You guys yeah. win, win Conference USA, finished number 14 in the nation. Uh, highest ranking ever by a Southern Miss team, man. So, I mean, your Southern Miss career is it, just, it, it doesn't get much better, man. Like I said at the beginning of, of when I introduced you, man, the epitome of what a nasty bunch defensive player should be is TJ Slaughter. Period. End of story. Great friend. Great teammate. He had your back. You know he did 100%. He'd do anything for you. I'd have done anything for you. That's just how it was, man. And uh, mm -hmm. your Southern Miss career was just unbelievable. One one thing to make people laugh, though, man, we go out every now and then, you and me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get dressed up, you know, go out and hit the town, be at, be at the bar, the club. And, you know, yeah. every dang time I'm out with you, man, everybody's like, who's your friend with the crystal eyes? I'm like, oh, man. 
I, I got eyes. You know, I got eyes. <laughs> I was like, I'll introduce you to TJ. Man, I got that all the time, man. <laughs> yeah, they got they got they, they got the good sometimes they get trouble sometimes. <laughs> man, we had some good times though, man. And like always, I said, this, always. This, 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 they don't make they don't make better people than you, man. So unbelievable career at Southern Miss, man. People still talk about you to this day. Um, so the NFL draft comes up. You go in the third round to the Jacksonville Jaguars, man. I mean, people that know football, you're three rounds and, and below second, first round. That's, that's big time. You got some serious talent. So, man, how would that make you feel going so high in the NFL draft? I was pissed. <laughs> Why well, didn't set that question up, right? <laughs> so, I'm going to be honest. When I went to the Senior Bowl, let's go to the Senior Bowl first. You, yep, yep, Senior Bowl. I go to Senior Bowl. They have Erlacher, Raynott Thompson, Corey Moore. I'm like, who the hell are these people? You did Ray Erlacher, this tall guy. And I'm like, hold up. Y'all finna put a safety at linebacker? You think he better than me? So the first day, we there. There's J.R. Redman, the running back for Arizona State, and me and Erlacher at linebackers. They told they, they run it. Some we had Kansas City was a uh, defense. Uh, uh, Gunther Cunningham was the defense coordinator, and he was like ruthless, you know. Yeah. And they were like, "Don't take nobody to the ground." I said, "Shit!" I'm finna, I said, "I don't know about you, homie, but I'm gonna light some <laughs> up." So, they don't know you, T. <laughs> yeah. So Coach Nix is standing in the back, Reverend Sutter. He was like, "Oh, that's my dog." I said, "Watch this, coach." And they run a lead. Erlacher comes in and, and takes it on with his outside shoulder. I'm coming straight down the pike, full speed. J.R. Mm. Redman gets the ball. I jack this fool, like, mm. and dump him. Bust mm. my nose again, bleeding. I jump up. <laughs> and Coach Nick is going crazy. Hit me in the head and everything else. They're like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just like, Crook. I'm like, I'm killing everybody. So literally the whole week, I, I knocked the – I think the, the fullback name was Dion Dyer. Huh. He catched him. He's like, I'm going to get this fool on like this. So I'm like, all right, boy. So he catch a pass, <laughs> and he run. And I'm like 20 yards down the field because I'm checking somebody else. He turned around. He, I mean, this dude running full speed at me, my son. Uh -huh. I, I squat and drop them hips. He coming, Ooh. and I shoot out them hips. <laughs> Jacket. Mm. Damage his shoulder. He couldn't even play in the same boat. Cool. <laughs> These are all practice stories you're talking about, TJ. These are practice at the senior bowl. And this then, is, uh, this is in the game. We're talking about practice this, stories. This right? is practice. This is practice. <laughs> and I get on the bus. Like, one day I get on the bus. Dugan's from Florida State. He's like, dude, I don't know what the hell wrong with you. But please don't hit me. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I told AD. I was telling Todd, I was like, man, I ain't. I said, I'm here. I'm fucking up everybody. I said, I, I said they're going to give us some respect. They're going to give us some respect. But my coach, Steve Sabo from Jacksonville, he said, when he seen me play at the senior bowl, this what he told me, like, ain't no way in hell I wasn't going to dress you. He said, I was yep. fighting. He like, your ass was crazy. Yeah, then they had no. me up. That, was, that was my first time playing special teams and getting in the wedge and all that yeah. crap. Man. I ain't like that crap. <laughs> uh, uh, pro, pro ball, you know, as you know way better than me, man. You, special teams are part of it, you know, and the yeah, best but, players on it sometimes. I, I, so, but hey. – uh, but, but yeah, eight years in the NFL, man. So three years with the Jags. But there's one year I got to talk about because Southern Miss people would like the ties. So you go to Green Bay for a minute. Brett Favre's there, man. How was that kind of – those little Southern Miss ties right there, man? You know, this is what I'm going to tell you. I, I, me and Brett was cool. Like, we talked and everything. Else. Brett was a good guy. I just – I left Florida. Mm -hmm. It was 80, 90 degrees. They fly me to Green Bay. This is my first time ever being a part of a trade, being cut, and going somewhere else and everything else. Oh, the bit just the business side of it, yep. Yeah. yeah. So I'm here in this strange place. It's cold as hell. Mm. It, I mean, cold. Yeah, we're Black southern guys. guys. We're southern dudes, man. Yeah, I can't I'm southern <laughs> to the heart. This is my first, <laughs> this is my first experience besides flying somewhere with a football team, and, you know, you get the best of everything. But now I'm on my own. And I'm in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I don't know nobody. I knew Brett. But we spoke and stuff like that, but 
I ain't kind of do the stuff. Brett come in a damn building with shorts on. It's like fucking 20 degrees. I'm like, what the fuck wrong with you? You know? <laughs> and the, the, the guys were to be at Green Bay was nothing to do. Like, I was like, you go to eat something to eat. It's just a Brett Fryer restaurant. It was it was none of the mall and stuff they got there now and everything else. It was just nothing. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was like I, I like I literally about went crazy there. Like wow. I wanted to quit playing football. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> well, <And> then, <laughs> well, for, for you in Green Bay though, man, you're still doing your NFL career, but but sounds like you know with the snow and the northern stuff. Fortunately, you get out of there, you get to come a little bit more south. And you get to go to Baltimore for a couple of years, man. Yeah, and what's so cool there, I'm always trying to tie Southern Miss stuff in this show, Adelius Thomas is on the team. So you get to be teammates with AD. So no, how was that? A- a- AD was there. Chad yeah. Williams was there. Chad Williams was there. And Raymond Walls was there. Ray Walls was there. Yep. I'm just thinking yeah. AD. You know, with, with I, I just talked to him not too long ago. Chad and Ray. Yeah. Yep. That's, so it's a Southern that, Miss reunion. <laughs> yeah, but that that's AD, Chad. And Ray Walls being there, that saved my life. That wow. saved my career. Wow. Because when I left Green Bay, I was like, I literally got on a plane. I flew to Birmingham. I'm like, I'm done. I'm like, I don't even want to play no more football. Like, and I land in Birmingham. I cut on my cell phone. I have like 30 messages on my phone. I'm like, who the hell called me? It's my agent. Uh, He's like, what the hell you doing? I've been calling you all day. And I'm like, man, what are you talking about? I was like, dude, I'm in Birmingham. I'm finna go home. And then he was like, no, you ain't. Turn around and get back on the plane. I said, I ain't getting on no damn plane. I said, I'm finna go home. He like, no, you finna go to Baltimore. Like this literally. I, I flew out of there, land, check my phone. I got like 30 messages. Get in the car with my mom. I said, man, I'm going home. He's like, be on the flight first thing in the morning. Wow. And they got me a, they got me like a six o'clock in the morning flight. I flew to Baltimore, did another workout, signed me that day, played that Sunday. Wow, man! But you That's totally feel the you you're feeling the business side of the NFL big time. The guy they wanted out of college, I was. The guy they wanted in the NFL, they didn't want that guy out of college. Mm-hmm. They wanted to control that guy out of college, and you weren't gonna control him. Yeah, I was a I was a beast. And I didn't. I knew one way to play the game, and that's full intense, full speed. I didn't understand this practice stuff where you can't hit the starting running back. I'm like, I'm gonna jack that motherfucker up. That's he the best. That's who I want to hit. You know, I didn't understand if this lineman hold me, don't fight. I'm like, if he hold me, I'm gonna teach, teach him not to grab me no more. So we gonna fight. If he grabs me, then he needs to know that he going to have to fight me. His big ass going to be tied. So he ain't going to want to grab TJ no more because TJ going to wear his ass out. <laughs> and that's the mentality I had. It's not that in the league. It's, it's, it's practice under control. Practice this and don't hit this person. And that's money right there. Don't, I'm like, I, I don't care. You know, <laughs> like I'll try to be the best. Mm-hmm. And I didn't understand the business side of football. I mm-hmm. didn't. And, um, until I got to Baltimore, after I left Baltimore and went to the Saints, that's when I kind of understood. And that's after about five, six years in the league, right, with the yeah. Saints. Yep. Yeah. You were a wanted man in the NFL by teams. That's why you went to several teams. You just can't find a guy like you every day, man. That's why you spent eight years in the NFL. I mean, the average lifespan in the NFL is not eight years, man. You, you, you had a hell of a career. And on top of that, what you did at Southern Miss, people still, it's like you're an aura at Southern Miss, the way people talk about you, man. You just respect it. it you know that, man. You know that. Like, I was middle linebacker in 96, you know, 94, 95, 96, 97. You know, you came in, you know, 96, 97, you're outside linebacker. So in 98, they moved you to the middle. Man, you took mm-hmm. that baton and ran with it. You know, yeah, like, I, you know man, they're gonna, I'm like, they're going to gonna forget about me, man. <laughs> You, you know, I originally wanted to play middle, but I wasn't big enough. I couldn't gain no weight until I hurt both of my ankles. When I hurt both of my ankles, that was the first time in my life I couldn't run. I had to. I was just doing pool running at the uh, uh, aquarium. Uh, uh, what they call it? Or whatever. The oh, the, uh, the, yeah, not auditory, whatever. The, not uh, a, not a, not a, not a, not a yeah. auditory, whatever. Yeah. So I used to do pool running there all the time with all these photos on me because I had two high sprain ankles. And they were talking about putting me in a wheelchair and all like this. And I'm like, man, bump nope. this. I'm running on trampolines all the time. And that was the, I put on 20 pounds and my body flat didn't do nothing. Yeah. 
I put on 20 pounds of muscle. Well, well dude, so, that, that, that's, that's what's amazing about you. You were 200 yeah. when you came to Southern Miss. You got up to 240, 245 for the draft. And, dude, you were all muscle. I mean, I'm like, yeah. dude. You got you got blocks for abs. I'm doing sit ups. I, I can't get that. I'm trying, man. I can't do it. <laughs> you know. I, I but my I was raised by my, my coach, and he was all he always taught me. If you keep the core tight, everything else stay tight. So I just always been a sit up guy. I always do sit ups. Like even today, if I go to the gym and I do a workout, I'm doing four or five hundred sit ups all the time. Wow. 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 Yeah, that core, man. That core is key, man. I know my, my son's 13. They're teaching core training right now. So I would mm -hmm. say a little bit, little bit more of that when we were there, you know, a little bit more core training. Uh, yeah. But if you knew what to do like you did, you were you already doing it. So, but so, man, the NFL wraps up, Southern Miss wraps up. Hell of a football career, man. But but let's be honest, man. TJ Slaughter is not a bad looking guy, man. And uh, so you get into some, it. man, let's just call it what it is. You get into <laughs> modeling, you get into acting. Uh, you got an entrepreneur spirit, man, doing your thing and all sorts of stuff, man. So life after football, uh, how was that for you, man? I mean, acting, modeling, entrepreneur. So like the modeling, like I was modeling at 14. You know? uh, I remember. I remember you were yeah. <laughs> So, you know, when I got to the league, you know, I come in uh, meeting rooms with the linebackers. They got my pictures up on a projector, me and Speedos and stuff. I said, who in the <laughs> So, you know, I'll be on there like, which one are you looking at my pictures? Because uh, I know not to stand by your ass in the shower, you know. Yeah, so, that, that's before the Internet. That's before the Internet. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah, you so got to get find a picture. I'm, yeah, I'm like, how do you people get my pictures and stuff? <laughs> and so it's just something I always was doing. I didn't. I didn't look at it as anything. I just looked at it as uh, I was getting free clothes, you know, because uh -huh. these designers and stuff used to give me free clothes when I was younger. Uh, my uncle took me to this guy that was a clothing designer out of Atlanta, and he put me in a fashion show. And I was 14 when I first started modeling with grown men, but I was just as big as all the guys. But the, the crazy thing was, I liked it because it taught me self-control. Because when you go back in the, behind the curtain and people don't know it, when models get ready, you got grown women, you got grown men, we all naked. Oh. You know, you're throwing on, I'm 14 years old. I'm looking at women like, oh, please, please, calm yourself, TJ. Come, I'm like a little kid. You're, like, you're looking like you're looking like this, closing your eyes. <laughs> no, but it, 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 uh, when I say it, it, it you you looking, but you're trying not to get stimulated. You can't you can't walk around with a boner. You know what I'm saying? And at 14, 15 years old, it's it's hard. You know, uh, yeah. So it, it, it taught me to like really uh like to understand women and see them in a different light and try to don't let the physical part captivate you so much learn to get to know the person yeah and that was one of the biggest things about modeling but then when i got to when i got done playing ball i didn't know what i was gonna do like i didn't never know i was done i was still training i actually went and worked out for buffalo they wanted to sign me but i i had a i had a slight tear in my hamstring so i had wrapped my hamstring real tight Mm. with an ace bandage and I did a workout and I they were finna sign me and the mm. dang hamstring the ace bandage fell down they were like what's wrong with your hamstring and oh. they go take me to the doctor and they no. say he got a slight tear wow. and it was like they didn't sign me so I go to my doctor in Texas and he's like are you reading what they saying about you and I'm like nah and I had had a lot of injuries. I, I, I tore my groin off the bone and ruptured my abdomen when I was with the Saints I tore my flexor tendon and uh, San Francisco had to go to surgery and go to IR. Then when I got to New England, I tore my quad, mm. racing a receiver. Mm. And actually, I beat him. So I believe they were, saying, <laughs> they were saying all this stuff like he getting old and all like this. And I was reading these, and like he was like, I'm going to read the notes to you. So the guy read the notes, and I'm like, well, why didn't they just tell me that? Because I never knew I was done. And then uh, for a moment, I went, in the t I went in the tank, man. I was just like, I didn't know what I was going to do. Like, I was in this, I didn't feel like my family wasn't my family no more, you know. My mom when nobody was checking on me. Nobody was, that's how I'm doing. Mm. My brothers went to arguing with me. You know, mm. it's like, I say something, everybody just bow down. I'm like, nah, fight me, you know what I'm saying? Get mad at me, you know. Yeah. So I moved away and I isolated myself. Mm. Like, later I moved away from everybody. I was like, I'm going to learn business or something like this. But really for about a month, I just 
literally, I didn't do nothing. I just stayed in the house. Mm-hmm. And then I, I was laying down one day, and I was like, I literally, I was like, I was depressed. I was like, man, I just want to, I just want to go. Like I was at this point where I was just like, I wanted everything to end. Mm-hmm. And then my coach came to me in the spirit, and he was just standing there. He like, get your ass up. No. I'm literally a coach. And I'm like, well, get up and do what? And he was just like, get up. Wow. And I'm like looking at him right over my bed saying, get up. I said, get up. He said, do what you know how to do. Wow. And I, I, I was like, what do I know how to do? And yeah. I know how to hurt my husband. Well, listen, he like, do what you know how to do. And what I've been doing all my life is training. Mm-hmm. So I literally got up out of bed, put on some running clothes. Went outside, ran the hills, then came in, made a shake, went to the gym, worked out, came back, and then I did some extra running that later on that day. And then I started training people. And yeah. I, I, I just started learning people. And then I started comparing it to football uh-huh. and learning guys. Like some guys you can yell at. Some guys you got to smack on the butt and say, come on, dude, <laughs> I need you, baby. We need you today. Some dudes you got to say. You got to help them along. You got to run with them. Like when we used to be running sprints and stuff like this, you know, yeah. some of the guys you can yell at and some of the guys we had to hold them by the arm and literally pick them up and yeah. run with them. Yeah. So we don't have to do it. And so I took that approach with people. And then I started learning people a little bit more and figuring out things. And then from training, one of my friends told me to do a, 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 a fitness show. And I'm like, I ain't doing that crap, man. That ain't, that ain't for me. And then she signed me up, so she paid for it, so I did it, and I won. And then I got invited to Vegas to do some international show, and this girl was standing in line and asked me to take pictures with her. And I'm like, why you want to take pictures with me? She's like, I don't know. You just got a different vibe, a different look. And I'm like, all right, can I see you some pictures? She said, yeah. I took the pictures and put them on my Facebook. My boy ran Ava Talent in New Orleans. He like, can he? Oh, Ali. Ali, the play we're receiving for us. Ali, Ali. Oh, Ali. yeah, Ali. Ali, yeah. yeah. So he put his stuff, he put my pictures on his uh, website, and then he was like, dude, can you act? And I'm like, yeah, I act like I like you all the time, you know? And then he was like, oh, man, for real, can you act? And then I was just BS it, but I said, yeah, I can act, man. Then he was like, you got a reel? I was like, what's a reel? Then he like, anything? Right. And I had just in San Antonio did this film about some dudes going out to the bar. It was like a little short film. This lady had asked me to do it. And next thing you know, I sent it to this director. It was exactly the character he wanted me to play. So I got yeah. an acting gig. I never knew nothing about no acting. I flew down to New Orleans, shot there for three, uh, stayed there for three months shooting. And then it was like, I need an LA agent. And I moved to LA. So, dude, that, a big goal of this show is to, you know, people just need to know more behind the scenes with TJ Slaughter. Because, like I said, when I talk about you, man, you're this aura, man. And, like I said, you're the definition of nasty bunch. You just are, man. <laughs> and, uh, so, man, what's something maybe you want to say to the Southern Miss people, man, the fans out there who who literally adore you, man, and speak of you in the highest regard? I just want, you know, I want people to know one thing about me. Like, the thing, people didn't know where my passion came from, you know? And I always just wanted to win. Like, I literally thought the black and gold is me. You know, and and that's why I, I think there's a difference in the today's athlete versus yesterday's athlete. We we I embraced it. Like when I chose to sign it, so the miss I just didn't sign my name. I was like, you got me, you know, this is me. And so I I know I have people tell me all this crazy stuff I did when I was at Southern Miss and all the fights and stuff like this, but I never really started fights, so when I was asked to, but I was de- defending people a lot. You know, yeah. I, was, I did a lot of defending, and I, I tell people all the time, I see one of my players get jumped up, uh, somebody missing one of the players, I go I go defend them because that's what I thought I was supposed to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I was always uh, looking at things as, this is my brother, and I die for it, and I yeah. literally meant it. You know, in every sense of the word, I just want the Southern Miss people to know that I, I, I love them. I, I thank them. They don't think I'm crazy. You come up and speak to me, you know, because people sometimes look at me like, dude, you will, you, and you that mean? And I'm like, if I need to be. <laughs> yeah, if you need to be. Need to be now, you know? 
that's that's the kind of friend T.J. Slaughter was. That's the kind of teammate T.J. Slaughter was. That's the kind of leader T.J. Slaughter was. I, I just, you know, if you, if you know this guy, he's got your back more than anybody on the earth. And and that's why I love you for it, man. I always have. Appreciate it, brother. I, I, but the number one thing I tell people, I say this all the time. I say it's one thing. It's two things you can't buy. You can't buy love and you can't buy trust and loyalty. Trust and loyalty go hand in hand. Yeah. And and through life, that's like I have friends. I have people that put me in good situations. I made a lot of great relationships because I've been trustworthy and I've been loyal. If it's somebody business, I don't tell it. I don't, I'm not a big gossiper. And I'm like, look, don't talk to him about that. Don't talk to me. You know, if I do something with somebody and it's, it's between me and them, it's between me and them. And and I. I love when when I, when I love something, I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I love the game. If yeah. I love a person, I love it to the yeah. fullest. You know, yeah. and I don't I don't know how I don't know how to half ass anything. You yeah. don't even get a hundred, a hundred and ten. You might get a hundred and fifty, but your damn show ain't gonna get ninety out of me. Man, you know, it might be too much, <laughs> but but I, I don't know no other way. T TJ, I, I can't think of a better way to close this interview than what you just said. That's TJ Slaughter. That, that's that's who he is. You know, he's love, he's passion and intensity. And uh, I was just blessed to call him my friend to this day and, and just an unbelievable teammate and, and just literally what the Nasty Bunch is all about. So, man, TJ, thank you so much for being on today, man. I could I could talk to you the rest of the day and but Man. you know, eventually we had to come to a close. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I, I thank you when you called me, and it was you, Marchant. You know, I, I, at first I was like, I ain't finna do no damn podcast, but it was you. <laughs> well, remember, it's a show; I, I they can it. see it it's on YouTube. Man, it's gonna be on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, it, it, it it's good. You, you like I told you, I remember you driving me around and we going different places and riding around with you, and I'm like, dang. This dude, the shit, you know. <laughs> I used to like you the shit. I'm like, oh, I'll fit it. I'll fit it. Well, you, I was like, I'll come. I'm stepping right in his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> man, what, what, man, just this unbelievable times we have, man. And like I said, yeah, I'm so fun. glad to call you my friend to this day. TJ, love you, man. And and as always, Southern too, Miss bro. to the top. Always. Black and gold V5, baby. That's it, V5. <laughs> Yes, well, I can't begin to tell you how much I enjoyed catching up with TJ Slaughter, a great teammate of mine from back in the day and a great friend to this day. Well, this show, we brought you some familiar faces telling their favorite Southern Miss memories. And I think you're going to recognize this next face. When I think of him, I think of Thursday night, October 10th, 1996. We're playing on ESPN at East Carolina, and we had been struggling at the quarterback position but our head coach, Jeff Bauer, decides to make a move at that quarterback position and start Lee Roberts. And I tell you what, he went off that night and we smashed East Carolina. And finally, we had a quarterback that we could really, really lean on. So uh, next up, here comes a great, great memory from my friend, a great teammate, a guy who's in the Southern Miss Athletics Hall of Fame. We got inducted in the same night, which was cool. So here comes a great memory from the one and only Lee Roberts. First of all, Marshan, I just want to congratulate you on your new podcast. So excited for you and just your way to give back to Southern Miss. I'm also honored to have the opportunity to share a great moment in Southern Miss history. So I want to talk a little bit about my path as far as getting to Southern Miss and my first start in 1996 on ESPN against East Carolina. So obviously three things that I kind of live by are, you know, hard work, dedication and persistence. So when I finished high school, came to Southern Miss, had an opportunity early to compete, um, had some, obviously some things I had to fight through, uh, new quarterback named my freshman year. And so it just made me work a little harder. Uh, was second team uh, my, my freshman year, kind of bumped down to third team as my sophomore year. But again, just one thing I wanted to do was work hard and really meet my goal and help my team for uh, success. Uh, so I had an opportunity. Coach Coach Bauer made a, made a decision in 1996, halfway through the year, to change quarterbacks. Coach Norman Joseph called me in his office. And you know, anytime you get called into an office, whether it's your coach, your principal, 
what have you, you're not sure what's about to take place. Well, on that day in 1996, my dream came true. Obviously, coming to Southern Miss was a big honor, but now the opportunity to start for the Golden Eagles was one of my greatest moments in Southern Miss history. Again, so much excitement with my family, my high school coaches, my wife, Tracy, just all surrounding me for success. And again, that night in East Carolina on national television, my family able to make it, make the long drive to Greenville, North Carolina, and things just couldn't have been any better for the Roberts family that night. Again, credit my teammates, my coaches for all my success. And again, just honored to share my greatest moment in Southern Miss history. Thanks so much for sending that great memory into the show, Lee Roberts. Well, that's it for another edition of Anyone, Anywhere, Anytime. I appreciate your support in the show. The only thing I ask, if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. It's free to do and simple to do. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or what have you, uh, please subscribe over there. We want to keep bringing you great, great content as this show grows and uh, be around for a long, long time. So... As I keep saying in these shows, it's a great time to be a Golden Eagle. We're winning big time in several sports. And uh, until next time, as always, it's Southern Miss to the top.